coming from Judges chapter 10, verses 10 through 18, talking about rebuke and repentance. And so uh, Judges is a book that, uh, that starts off a new chapter and beginning for the children of Israel as they have assigned 12 leaders uh, throughout the camps uh, in the children of Israel. They have uh, defeated enemies and enemy camps and things like that. And God has been on their sides, but we see something a little bit different here in Judges chapter 10. And we're going to uh, embark upon this journey. Uh, before we start, let us go to God in a word of prayer. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your love, your grace, and your mercy. God, we ask that you forgive us of our sins. Lord, we ask that as we journey into your word, that you open up our eyes, our hearts, our minds, to receive something new, and Lord, to receive your word, not to keep it, not to hide it, but to tell others about it, and to tell how gracious and how good of a God that you really are. So we thank you and we love you, in Jesus' name that we do pray, amen. And again, uh, we are in Judges chapter 10, and it talks about rebuke and repentance, and in order to understand uh, verses 10 through 18, uh, which is in, with this conclusion of um, the 10th chapter of Judges, uh, I'd like to go back um, a few verses in Judges chapter 10. I would like to read from verse 6. I'll begin that reading for us. It says, again, the Israelites did evil in the eyes of the Lord. They served the Baals and the Ashtoreths and the gods of Aram and the gods of Sidon, the gods of Moab, the gods of the Ammonites, and the gods of the Philistines. And because the Israelites forsook the Lord and no longer served him, he became angry with them. And he sold them into the hands of the Philistines and the Ammonites, who that year shattered and crushed him. For 18 years, they oppressed all the Israelites on the east side of the Jordan in Gilead, the land of the Amorites. And the Ammonites also crossed the Jordan to fight against Judah, Benjamin, and Ephraim, Israel was in great distress. And so again, to understand verses 10, what's going on in verses 10 through 18, uh, verse 6 through 9 help us with a little bit of what's going on. The essence of Israel's sin was that they served other gods. They put other, the, the gods of the people that they have defeated um, on the same level or above God. And here we see seven different ethnic and national gods I mentioned that Israel went after in idolatry. First God that they talk about is uh, Baal, the weather god. And he was associated with financial success. Then um, also we see Israel was not, Israel was attracted to these other gods, not because of the beauty of an idol image, but because of what was associated with pagan deities. Then we uh, see in verses 6 through 9, talks about Ashtoreth. It's the goddess of fertility and was associated with love, sex, and romance. And as for other gods of the neighboring nations around them, it was a matter of conforming to popular culture. It was a, it was a matter of forming to what was hot at the time. I'm doing it because the others are doing it. And so we see in today's lesson, Rebuke and Repentance, the first thing I want to ask in our open discussion and, and introduction, do you think that God, for lack of a better word, gets tired of our mess? Yes. <laughs> do you think God gets tired of our mess? Okay. And so then, the next question is, should we keep asking for forgiveness if we know we are not going to stop? Yes. Yeah? Okay. Now, let, uh, can we go a little bit further into dialogue? Why do you think we should stop asking for forgiveness, even if we know, maybe or maybe not, that we are going to stop? Why do you think we should stop asking for forgiveness? Do you think it's just? Because 
for the for the online viewers. Okay. Amen. Couldn't hear. Uh, just just rather leave that to the mic. I just said that um, if we know that we're not going to stop, if we have no intention on stopping, I feel like it's just a waste of our time and God's time to keep asking for forgiveness. Amen. So here it is. We are in our next slide where we talk about confrontation with God. But also, I like what the introduction also talks about. Scripture reminds us that this does not negate our obligation to make good choices. Even though we know we serve a great God, but God, he does give us free will and free mind and freedom of speech, but yet he wants to know, even though I gave you that, will you still choose me at the end of the day? So verses 10 through 14, uh, if someone could read that for us. Verse 10, and the children of Israel cried unto the Lord, saying, we have sinned against thee, both, <coughs> excuse me, both because we have forsaken our God and also served Balaam. And the Lord said unto the children of Israel, did not I deliver you from the Egyptians and from the Amorites, from the children of Ammon and from the Philistines, the Zidonians also, and the Amalekites and the Moanites did oppress you. And ye cried to me, and I delivered you out of their hand. Yet ye have forsaken me, and served other gods. Wherefore, I will deliver you no more. Go and cry unto the gods which ye have chosen. Let them deliver you in the time of your tribulation. Amen. So they have a confrontation with God. They, they have served and took on the other gods of their, of their enemies, or that they have defeated. Here it is, something very interesting in verse 8 that's going on before we uh, jump into verse 10. It says, for 18 years, when God stole them into their enemy's hands, they oppressed all the Israelites. So after experiencing, here it is, after the first year, I would have thought it was just coincidence. Okay, I'm losing to my enemy, things like that. After the second year, after the third year, I would have said, now God, I, I think it's, I would have seen that it's something going on because here it is. God gave them victory over all of their enemies. And after 18 long years of constantly losing a battle and being under captivity, they see, and the children is required unto the Lord, saying, we have sinned against thee. Both because we have forsaken our God. They have noticed that they are losing and they have betrayed God. And they said now, they also notice that they have served a false God. So here it is. They offer a confession. They confess to the Lord, Lord, we see that we have not done the right thing. And then it says, God, he has a rebuttal. He tells them, did not I deliver you from the Egyptians and from the Amorites and from the children of Ammon and from the Philistines and the, the Zidonians and the Amalekites and the Moanites? And here it is, after I have delivered you from them, you go and worship their God. The audacity, the, the slap in the face of after everything that I have done for you, you pick to uh, have your adversary as your play pal. Something that uh, my mother would tell me, she said, son, don't bite the hand that feeds you. Because one day you're going to notice that you don't have it like you used to have it. She also say, don't let your, don't let your, you're going to miss your water. You don't miss your water until your well runs dry. Said that last Sunday. 
And so here it is. God has continuously looked out for the children of Israel. He has constantly allowed them to be victorious. He has got them out of oppression from, from the enemy. He has brought them from Egypt. He has given them leaders. He has given them great leadership. But every time God, God gets them out of a funk, they start to do the wrong thing. And then that makes me think about us. How many times have we said to God, God, if you get me out of this, I promise I'm not going to do it anymore. And then a couple months later, you find yourself doing the same thing. And then we wonder, well, why haven't I gotten to where I need to be or where I know God needs me to be? Here it is. It's because of lack of self-discipline. And because we know that God will forgive us. Mm -hmm. We yeah. take it for granted. Yeah. And we, he'll, he'll cleanse us yeah. when we confess. We take God's grace and mercy sometimes for granted. Pastor Curran, I got a question. Yes, sir. Is this the result of the new generation coming over to Jordan and when God told them to destroy everybody as they advanced and they didn't? Mm -hmm. Is this a result of that? Repeat that one more time. I got a microphone. <laughs> he has a microphone. Is this a result of the, the, the people coming from over to Jordan? And God said, as I advance you, to destroy everything in, in the village. Mm -hmm. Is this a result of that because they didn't destroy everybody? And now these people ru was rising up again against the Israelites? No, this is a result of after having taken or, or after having um, victory over the enemies and then seeing what their enemies were doing and then conforming or, or I'll say fraternizing with the enemy. But, but he told them to destroy everybody so that this wouldn't happen. Mm -hmm. So the, I'm asking, is the result that they didn't destroy everybody, is this, is, is this why this is happening? No. Yeah, so, yeah, to your point, they, they, there's, there's, there's always a remnant, right? Um, and therefore, um, God allows the remnant to be there so that when they disobey him again, these enemies are going to rise up again and, and try to defeat them again. So we find a history of God's people, how the God sends a leader to destroy their enemies, but they never destroy all of them, right? And then they, they return from or, or, or they move from God, and then God allows those enemies to, to rise back up again. A new king takes, takes position, right, and conquers them again. And this, is, this history, this historicity of these Israelites continuously disobeying God and when they disobey God, then God allows the enemy to, to, to rise up again. And we see it even now. I mean, you, you think about... Things seem to be going nice in, in society today, then all of a sudden, war breaks out, right? And there's peace again, you know, or what seems to be peace again. And then we have this thing going on in, in Gaza, right? War breaks out again. So, um, you know, God allows us the, the opportunity to um, align ourselves with him and his will, but then when we don't, then he allows the enemy to rise up. That answer, I think that answers your question. And there's always a theme of disobedience. Mm -hmm. So going back to what, what you were saying, and I'm assuming, I mean, I'm assuming, were you referring to the fact that God gave instructions in Jericho right. to kill mm -hmm. everything? And everybody. Right, right, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. And, and that, that was a test of obedience. So as we move forward, as Pastor said, there's a history here. And we tend to forget the history. We always think about what we want to think about instead of asking the word, what did God say? That's where we are today. Everybody's got an opinion. 
My question is, what, what does God say about it? And he has left us a rich history. And remember this, too. The generations are changing. So the ones that became across Jordan, you got to remember, everybody left Egypt didn't get to cross Jordan. The generation died off. So we got new generations. This is why it's important for us to teach our children uh, the Bible and about God. Like, uh, but that's, it, it's, it's a recurring um, theme here of disobedience. Amen. So we see there's a confession. Then God reminds them of what they have done, what he has done for them, and how many times he has delivered them and who he has delivered them from. Then he tells them this. Verse 14. Go and cry unto the God which you have chosen. Mm -hmm. Let them deliver you in the time of tribulation. And so the challenge is you have confessed, but then also with them confessing, this cry of God, we have forsaken you and we put away this God it doesn't just have to be, or it shouldn't just be, a voice confession. Because I can say I'm sorry and not mean I'm sorry. They weren't sincere. Amen. Because they were seeing the hands of the enemy play at work. Because they had forsaken the true and living God. And isn't it a slap in the face after you have done something for someone over and over and over again, and then they turn on you? Mm. Joy. They wanted to be saved from their tragedies, but they did not want to have a relationship with God. Mm -hmm. Amen. They wanted to be saved from what was going on, or they wanted to be saved from their tribulations, but did not want to put away, seemingly, did not want to put away the other gods. Then I, I, I like what God says. He says, therefore I will deliver you no more. God was harsh with Israel because they had to be genuinely sick of their sin. Not just verbally, but genuinely sick with their sin before they would genuinely turn to God. God allowed Israel to experience the sickness of their sin. They had to hit rock bottom. Amen. They had to re hit, hit rock bottom. And so, as a result, a confession, a reminder, then God challenges them and says again to them, verse 14, go and serve. Go and get the help that you think you need. <coughs> Next slide. As we see confrontation with God, we see confrontation with Ammon, verse 15 through 18. If someone can read that for us. And the children of Israel said unto the Lord, We have sinned. Do thou unto us whatever seemeth good unto thee. Deliver us only, we pray thee, this day. And they put away the strange gods from among them, and served the Lord. And his soul was grieved for the misery of Israel. Then the children of Ammon were gathered together and encamped in Gilead. And the children of Israel assembled themselves together and encamped in Mizpah. And the people and princes of Gilead said one to another, What man is he that will begin to fight against the children of Ammon? He shall be head over all the inhabitants of Gilead. Amen. So it's verse 15, we see a response. After God's challenge, it says, and children of Israel said, we have sinned against you, Lord, and they are accepting of whatever punishment God has for them. So they are tired of serving other gods that have, as God has said, that have forsaken them. Because how many times are you going to go to a rock and say, rock? Let it rain today and feel crazy. 
God showed them that when they were in the wilderness, he showed their forefathers that when they were in the wilderness and they complained to Moses, Moses, we don't have anything to eat out here. We don't have anything to drink. And God supplies them every time. God did not allow their shoes and their clothes to wear out when they were in the wilderness. God, God allowed them to have victory over their enemies. Not just one, but several. And then also this statement, this indicates that Israel came to a place of total surrender to God. Says, Lord, whatever is our punishment, do unto us, Sister Joanne. That was a desperate cry. A desperate cry. Because God challenges them. He says in verse 14, go and cry unto the gods which you have chosen. Let them deliver you in the time of your tribula tribulation. God tells them, go and look back at what the other gods did for you. And then when you go and look back and you get your answer, come back to me and we'll talk. And then after, here it is, they had been experiencing this for 18 years. And then, verse 16, it says, and they put away the strange gods from among them and served the Lord, and his soul was grieved for, for the misery of Israel. Israel finally discovered that the worst of serving God is better than the best of serving idols. I'll say that one more time for us. Israel finally discovered that the worst of serving God is better than the best of serving idols. God wants to know, will you serve me and serve me alone? Because it hurts God when we don't serve him. It hurts God when we don't serve him, when we don't trust him, when we don't have the faith. God wants to see our effort in having relationship with him. And then it says, and his soul was grieved for the misery of Israel. His soul could no longer endure the misery of Israel. And God looked upon disobedient Israel with compassion and not hatred. And so here, this, 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 chap this chapter 10 in Judges, in my, in my heavenly mind, it foretells of how many times we have disobeyed God, we have turned our backs on God, we have trusted in man, we have trusted in other things. But here it is, God still has had compassion on us. It was difficult for God to allow Israel to stay in their misery, though it was what was best for them. They had, they made their own bed, and they had to lay in it. Sister Joey, I saw you. Well, I was going to say that's God's love. Mm -hmm. That's God's love. Many times, when I would be disobedient, or have you ever thought about when you were disobedient and you did not want your parents to chastise you, but they had to, to teach you not to do this anymore. And the thing that I would hate is when my mother would say to me, this hurts me more than it's going to hurt you. And I would look with her in a bewildered face and say, how is this going to hurt you more than it hurts me? Because it pains a parent to see their child hurt. But then, the blessing of it is that after you have, after they, after God has given them this punishment, the blessing of it is God still had his compassion on them. All right? Verse 17 it says, The children of Ammon were gathered together, and Captain Gilead and the children of Israel assembled themselves together 
and the Captain Mizpah, and the people and princes of Gilead said to one another, What man is he that will begin the fight against the children of Ammon? He shall be head over all the inhabitants of Gilead. So what that means is they were wondering after being misled who will God send as our next leader? They were putting away their false gods. They were putting away their false idols. And now they want to serve God but the, the, the way that they always knew is to serve God was to have a leader before them. But the leader that they that has to be chosen must be God sent. So here it is an open discussion. When God sees, when, when we have disobeyed or have put distrust in God, the question is, does God get angry with us? Yes. Yet, God still has his compassion on us. Then, in the Old Testament to New Testament, or actually a, prof a prophet from the Old Testament said he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. Jesus paid the ultimate price for every sin that, God, that we know that we have as men. But yet God sent that Savior so that we, even though we do need to repent still and say, God, I'm sorry, it has to be from the heart. Because so many times we can say verbally, I'm sorry, but not mean. God looks at the heart. So we have to make good choices. We have, even though God has given us free will, free mind, we still have to, to serve the true and living God, and that's the God of Israel. So we'll go to the next slide. Today's aim. To show that God paved the way for victory when Israel returned to God in obedience. The principle, to see that God blesses his people when they return to him in obedience. And then the application, this is where we apply it to our lives. To stress that we should be quick to confess sin and turn back to God in obedience. Again, the application, to stress that we should be quick to confess sin and turn back to God in obedience. When I pray, the first thing I say in the morning, Lord, forgive me of my sin. Those that I know of and those that I don't know of, forgive me. And it's not that I willingly look, went out at the top of the morning and say, well, I'm going to sin this morning, Sister Moorhead. But yet, we were born and shaped in sin and iniquity. But God looks for us, even though in the midst of our sin, to yearn after God. Amen? So this is our lesson for today. Come from Judges chapter 10, rebuke and repentance. On next week, our lesson will be coming from 2 Samuel chapter 11, verse 2 through 5, verses 14 through 18, verses 26 through 27, then chapter 12, talking about David's sin and punishment. And we do thank God for our lesson on this morning. Do we have any questions or comments before um, we dismiss from our Sunday school hour? Don't promise God nothing you're not sincere about. Don't promise God anything you're not sincere Don't about. play with God. Amen. Amen. God is a jealous God. And if we put things before him, 
that means he cannot get the ultimate blessing from God. That means that God will allow us to stay in sin. He will allow us to keep on flirting with the, with the temptation of sin. And here it is. You have to seek deliverance. He'll have us thinking, up, thinking things we shouldn't think. I think scripture says that he gives us a, a retrobate mind. We'll think we're telling the truth and we're telling a lie. Yes. We fool ourselves. Amen. Man, if there's nothing else, allow us to bow our heads and pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you and we love you. We praise your name. Thank you for your word on this morning. We ask that it, it melts in our hearts. But not only does it stays in our heart, but it's told to others about how good of and great of a God you are. God, we are sorry right now if we have ever turned against you or, have, or having a season right now where we don't know where we are within Christ. Lord, allow us to find our way. Lord, we do say that we are sorry that we, if we have done anything against you. And Lord, we ask for your grace and your mercy. And so we thank you and we love you. We thank you for our pastor. We thank you for our church and allow us to go into our worship experience, rest and abide in this place is our prayer. In Jesus' name that we do pray. Amen. on Facebook, or visit our website at www.saintimothychurch.org. Share this with your family and friends. Thanks for joining us. We appreciate it. Have a blessed week.